Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Comic Crash Course. This episode is about text and speech bubble basics. Uh, in this episode, I'll be giving you a quick rundown of text and speech bubbles and how they should look in order to give your comic a more professional quality. There aren't a lot of tutorials out there, so hopefully this one gives you guys some proper insight on lettering. Starting out, let's talk about alignment and spacing as well as text size. Typically, on an 11 by 17 inch page, you want your font to be about 10 or 11 points, depending on the text. When it's printed out at standard comic size, that brings it down to appear like 6.5 point or so, uh, which is perfectly readable for comics. Additionally, you don't want too much space in between the lines, like what we have here versus here, um, because it takes up too much space on your page. So the less space that your lettering takes up, the more space you have for your art. Uh, your text should always be center aligned with a few exceptions, and I'll get to those in just a minute. Uh, you want kind of this pseudo like hexagonal diamond shape, so that the dialogue fits into your speech bubbles comfortably, like so. So if you compare these two, so here's just a basic ellipse, and then here is the adjusted ellipse. Um, and that brings me to that point of the speech bubble shape. So if you look at all the wasted space in just the ellipse shape, even if you come over here and you edit it, and you squish it down some, it's still kind of tight and doesn't seem like, you know, it doesn't feel quite as good as like this one, which has just a little bit more breathing room, but not so much that it's taking up too much space. Um, and th there's a really easy way to avoid the ellipses. And you don't want an ellipse because it just doesn't look as professional as these ones with the rounded corners. The easiest way to do that, if you're using Adobe Illustrator, is to use the white arrow, the hollow point arrow, click your, your uh, points, and then you just kind of drag it up a little bit. I know that's yellow and that's kind of hard to see. Let me change that really quickly. Give me, okay, never mind. But anyways, it's it's really easy to do, and then you can just copy and paste that, or uh, if you have your move tool selected and you hold down alt while you're moving, you can, boom, copy, no problem. And then you just kind of change it to fit whatever you're looking for. Um, so next, when you've got a speech bubble on the edge of your panel, you don't want this. This is like an almost 90 degree like intersection point, and it just kind of looks like not as good as it should look even when you kind of do that. So what you want is you want more of like this kind of shape where the, where the rounded bit meets it and it gives it this nice kind of angle and it's just more aesthetically pleasing. Um, so getting this rounded edge against a corner or against a uh, the top line or something, that works a lot better. And that's this is one of those situations where you would uh, right or left align based on whatever corner it's in. You would also do this if um, your character's face is taking up most of the panel because you don't want to put your speech bubbles over your character's faces, but I'll get to that in the next episode. So for that one, this is the speech bubble basics as far as shapes and, and text goes. If you have any questions, feel free to comment and ask. Tune in next time for tips about speech bubble placement and tails as where they need to go to lead the eye through your pages. If you have any topics you want me to discuss, leave a comment, like the video if you learned something new, and subscribe for more content. Until then, I'll see you guys next time.